plane. But how in the world did he get it past security there? Passengers are shocked by the armed traveler. We'll have that story coming up. And then a man's car is hijacked with some precious cargo inside. Man's best friend. Find out what happens. The pandas are here. The pandas are here. The National Zoo's newest residents are settling in tonight, but we won't be seeing them for quite a while. And we won't be seeing warmer temperatures for a few days either. The dual Doppler XL snow machine back in action. Bruce will tell us how much to expect. Hi, I'm Sergeant Dave McLean, serving here in sunny Vicenza, Italy. And I'd like to say hi to my mom and all my other family and friends in the great city of Cleveland, Ohio. Billy and Savannah would like to say it too. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Grandma. A scary ride for Alaska Air passengers leaving San Francisco for Seattle. Tonight, police there say that a man with a knife was on board. Passengers say the man's odd behavior began when he came on board without a shirt, then took off his shoes and socks. He then pulled out a six-inch folding knife and started cleaning his nails. The man became belligerent when pilots asked him to hand over the knife. They called police who forcibly removed the man before takeoff. Well, tonight it's still unclear how the suspect made it through security with the knife. Well, it is a case of missing identity in Portland, Oregon. A woman has been found, but she has no memory. This mystery woman has been living at a homeless shelter for the past few days. Last week, she wandered into a hotel, told the desk clerk she didn't know who she was or how she got there. Police say the woman was unharmed, well-dressed, and wearing a wedding ring. But so far, no family has turned up or contacted police. Therapists are now working with her to try and help her restore her memory. Well, our country is welcoming two very special visitors all the way from China. This specially equipped FedEx cargo plane came into Chantilly, Virginia this afternoon carrying these two pandas all the way from China. The two and three-year-old pandas are Mei Shang and Chan Chan. The pandas are on loan to the National Zoo in Washington for the next 10 years. Zoo visitors will be able to see them sometime in January. Beautiful animals. Mm. Wow. Well, there is some Christmas spirit in Philadelphia tonight after one lucky man is reunited with his best friend. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Miller was reunited with Barkley earlier today, just about 24 hours after the dog was stolen in a carjacking. Gary had stopped at a gas station, and when he went inside to pay the attendant, somebody took his car with Barkley inside. Oh. Gary says he spent a tense morning searching for his pal until police called and said they found a dog matching Barkley's description wandering the streets. Well, tonight, Gary says he is thrilled to get his dog back. The car is still missing. I don't care. <laughs> they can have it. <laughs> Got my dog back. Yeah, let him have the car. St. Oh. Nicholas himself must be watching over this dog. Barkley was Miller's Christmas present last year. Isn't that a great They're story. both happy. See how happy the dog is to I see know. him? That is great. Pals. Well, the freezing <laughs> weather is sticking around. And it looks like snow is about to join it. Bruce is in the dual Doppler XL Storm Center with the latest. But I guess Barkley didn't go to watchdog school, did he? <laughs> let, let him get away with the car while he was in it, I guess. But anyway, they're, they're happy and they're back together. But we have got snowfall to continue end with tonight and tomorrow and the National Weather Service has expanded the lake snow advisory for tonight to include Lake and Geauga counties as well as Ashtabula counties. Now a lake snow warning is in effect for Erie and Crawford County over in Pennsylvania. They can see two to four inches of snow quite easily. Let's take a look at the conditions outside this evening and it was a cold crisp night once again and then well, about a couple of hours ago the snowflakes began to drift in from the west and now much of the area has seen just a, a little light snowfall as far as that is concerned. Let's take a look at the conditions outside right now on Dual Doppler XL, your most powerful live television radar. The only television radar that scans in the snow machine mode. And you can see snow out over the lake and some light snow back off to the west towards Will Willard and Norwalk and extending down to Mansfield. We'll kick on the uh, snow machine and show you where the snowfall is occurring uh, at the present and over the last couple of hours. General drift to the east. Now it looks rather ominous with the big blob of white. But uh, as this continues to cruise into motion, we put on the snowfall rates and just offshore we're getting a fairly substantial rate right in through here and give you a little closer look at this as we close in and this is coming down about the rate of an inch an hour about a half an inch an hour in the different striations as it goes out and again less than a tenth of an inch an hour to the far wide reaches of that so once again not extremely heavy but it is all generally moving to a due east direction and that means you get out towards Euclid and uh, Ashtabula and out to Geneva and that's where things are going to get a bit dicey 
AC a little later on this evening. We look at the second component of dual Doppler XL and crank this into motion. Just a wide scan view. More of the bands up around the thumb of Michigan and even down to Columbus and Dayton and Cincinnati. Everyone was reporting at least a little bit of light snow. The only real significant accumulation likely to be right here over extreme northeastern Ohio. Take a look at conditions outside this evening and under cloud, cloudy skies with some light snow at Hopkins, 21 degrees, humidity 93 percent, barometer 2988 falling, winds are southwesterly at 14 miles an hour. As we check all around the greater Cleveland area this evening, 23 degrees downtown, 20 Ravenna and Akron, 21 in Medina and Mayfield Heights, and then wind chill values at or below zero once again again, although the winds not quite as frisky as they've been. Around the state, readings well into the 20s, so no warm-up even if you head down to Cincinnati. Big satellite picture across the nation shows the cascade of clouds swinging down. That's on the ridge of a high-pressure cell in the west and a trough at the low pressure in the east. That's what we've had with the Arctic plunge. Well, one clipper is moving through here. Here's the second one that will be coming down tomorrow evening. We're not going to get much rest in between. The heaviest bands of snow with southwest winds been over Buffalo. Canceled the uh, hockey game tonight in Buffalo because of the snow. Lighter snow around the region. There's the lake effect snow bands. Now, as we look at precision cast, you can see the snowfall will be over the northern parts of the state overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. And then it should begin to diminish briefly in the mid to late morning. But then here comes the next batch of moisture. That that's with the second clipper. It will expand across the region and then begin to pull away. And this should be the last one in the series that we see. And we ought to be in pretty good shape as we work in towards the weekend, beginning to come out of this deep freeze because the jet stream is finally going to relax a bit. The Arctic air lifts north. And even by Sunday and into Monday, we'll start getting into a warmer regime and modifying temperatures at long last. So here's the situation tonight. That Lake Snow Advisory, Lake Geauga and Ashtabula County for tonight. The rest of the greater Cleveland area will We'll see snowflakes less than an inch west and south, one to three in the snow belt for tonight, low 16. Still cold tomorrow, snow early, snow late, the high reaching 25 degrees tomorrow afternoon. And your dual Doppler XL seven day outlook calls for the snows to end Friday morning, drying and gradually warming as we head through the weekend. And look at that, early next week, we're going back to spring, folks. I don't care what anybody says. Well, some <laughs> sick children at Lakewood Hospital have a present in hand tonight, thanks to the efforts of some senior citizens. The group used old Christmas cards to create picture books. The idea came from a volunteer at the Gingham Goose Gift Shop, a nonprofit store that passes on all the proceeds to the community. Also today, the seniors donated a few dozen children's videotapes to the hospital. Good for them. Well, some folks took a trip to Fantasyland tonight. Tonight was the second annual Barbie party benefiting the Toys for Tots program. Everyone who attended the event was asked to dress up in Western or Barbie attire and also donate a new Barbie doll. This year, organizers hope to give at least 100 dolls to the charity. Boy, that's a good effort. And we'll again be outside the, uh, the stadium, stadium on Sunday before the uh, Browns And if game. you can't see there, drop it off most of the local malls, Best Buy stores. Anywhere. And we're going to bundle up, too. Hey, the Cavs were taking on the Bulls tonight. But they are not the Bulls of yesteryear, we know. Ronnie will let us know if the Cavs got stuck on their horns next in sports. And going down the aisle has a whole new meaning for this couple. We'll explain their rather unusual wedding just ahead. Tonight was the tale of two teams going in opposite directions as the Cavaliers took on the Chicago Bulls. First of all, the Cavaliers were in first place in the NBA Central Division prior to tonight's game with 10 wins. While the Brutal Bulls, well, they were holding up the rear in the Central with just two wins and 17 games. On to Chicago to see if this game would play out to the script. An easy win for Randy Whitman and the Cavs? Let's hope so. Ron Mercer, watch him here. Got the Bulls out on top in the first quarter. This jumper made it 27-21 Bulls. Mercer had 34 for the game. Cavs mounted a comeback, sort of. Cedric Henderson, the slam, still a Chicago by one, 38-37. Then the Bulls took a two-point halftime lead. Corey Benjamin on the dunk, 42-40. The Cavs opened it up in the third quarter. Andre Miller took over. He had 20 points and 14 rebounds. Try assists, Ronnie. And then the Cavs had a 10-point lead. Clarence Weatherspoon led the Cavs with 23 points. Cavs win their 11th game of the season, beating the Bulls 92-88. Onto some college hoop and stuff for the Akron Zips as they took on Rhode Island. That's Stephon Marbury's little brother. That's Zach Marbury. He's not as good as Stefan. And then again, he had to watch some of what was going on as Nate Schindelwolf had 20 points, hitting five of six threes. Akron wins over Rhode Island, 74 to 60. More hoop tonight as Kent took on Youngstown State. And yes, it's time to dance. 
with the Kent Golden Flash. Woo! Talk about the nice move. Trevor Hoffman led everybody with 19 points. He hit the three there. And then Kareem Massey. Watch him here. Hey, Ronnie, put my slam dunk on TV. Anytime, big fella. 76-55. It is the Flashes beating Youngstown State 76-55. John Hart says he isn't done yet. Then again, he did tell us that Charlie Manuel would take the Indians to another level. The level was here. Now the Indians general manager will expand his free agent search at the baseball winter meetings in Dallas. Today, John Hart sat down with Jeff Phelps, talked about his plans for the winter meetings, and listened to the spin he puts on why the Indians haven't gotten a top price free agent. You know, they're just a big log jam up at the top. And, uh, you know, I think that that's keeping, you know, a lot of games on the sideline, a lot of players, a lot of player movement is still on the sidelines. It's been a very, very slow moving market. Uh, you know, the expectations uh, of these players are so high that uh, it's, it's been difficult to, to really get the, uh, the clubs to move. No offense, I don't mean to be sarcastic, but don't you have to pay these people to get the big players? Chris Palmer. Is he feeling the heat right now? The future of the head coach of the Cleveland Browns is the topic, and it's hot. Chris Palmer.